very good morning to our dear student today again i am going to take a, a lecture on election law that is the topic the defacement of the public and private property here we have all already discussed with some of the good topic related to the unit 4 in which you might be remember that uh the first was something corrupt practices the need of education qualification of the candidate already discussed in the class then uh, criminalization of the politics which is also discussed in the class uh, through the my video lecture also and then also election expenses and then we have discussed regarding this model code of conduct given by the election commission then use of government private electronic media and some social media by the political parties and further we have also discussed related to the opinion and exit polls now we are going to discuss with the defacement of public and private property further one of the another topic will also be discussing related to the this uh, election law topic further we are going to discuss with the defacement of the public and private property first we have to understand what is the defacement defacement is that where a uh, something is put for the election campaign to the any of the unauthorized places whether it's a public or private until unless the written permission is taken by the owner and which there is the penalty for that here it is categorized into the some uh, some two or three parts the first is where there is a law which prohibits the defacement means the defacement act 2007 in delhi the delhi prevention of defacement of property act 2007 which has also been given that the in writing which includes the printing painting decoration lettering ornamentation etc and produced by the stencil and whereas the property is also defined that which includes any building hut structure wall tree fence post pole or any other things and by which the the competent authority will be responsible that the how the defacement is being done without the proper permission if it is done then they have to submit the the proof the evidence to the concern returning officer in the state which have a law that prohibit the defacement of the property in any manner the provision of the law would apply meaning thereby there cannot be any defacement in such cases even with the consent of the own. means here the consent of the owner of the property is required so therefore then further where the law permits defacement of the private property it seems that there is 
the some permission has is to be required by the owner means in which state the law if the law has expressed its provision means law is giving the permitting that any kind of defacement of the property with or without condition can be done so here is the provision that the commission's instruction is that a written permission of the owner or the occupant of the property must be obtained by the party or the candidate or any other concern and the same means whatever the evidence they have for the permission a copy of the same should be submitted to the returning officer and if there is a something the no law for the property in the state it seems that the commission has given the instruction means the temporary and easily removable campaign material such as flags or banners means would be permitted with the written permission of the owner or occupant of the property and this should be a voluntary basis and the copy of the written permission which has been obtained must be submitted to the returning officer of that area then further here is the sum of the the penalty provision has been given into the defacement law first whoever defaces any property in the public view by writing a making with the ink chalk paint or any other material except for the purpose of indicating the name of the person or the address of the owner occupier of such property shall be punishable with the imprisonment for the term which may extend to 1 year or with a fine which may extend to 50000 rupees or both second is when the any offence is committed under the sub section 1 of the benefit of the sum of the person where the corporate or an association of the person means here such other person or every president chairman director partner manager or secretary or any agent means connected with the management thereof what in the case may be unless he proves the offence was committed without the knowledge of this consent be deemed guilty of such offence so and this will also be treated under the ipc 18 60 now we are coming to the another topic reservation for women many of the student must be aware that in the panchayati raj or in the local bodies there is a provision for the reservation but the sum of the bill which is already pending before the parliament for the representation of women into the parliament and the state legislation therefore this topic is the reservation for women in the parliament 
and the state legislatures. Here, one of the things I should I would like to mention here a report on the women in politics which has been published in 2017 that the India ranked 148th position in what is that women in parliament category and 88th position in women at the ministerial position category and our parliament currently has the 11.8 percent women representation and the state assembly will have the only nine percent and even though the women empowerment has become the catch phrases in the every government policy here so some of the things we are going to discuss pros and cons the things and including the bill also let me uh, have uh, some presentation here that you should also feel that yes the reservation must be uh, put into the bill is still pending continuously since long uh, the sum of the things which has to be be continued with the uh, related to the as i have said that the women empowerment into the government policies means the first question is why there is a need of political representation why the everyone says that the let's have the debate on the women representation here some of the point i have mentioned here that was the section 33 of the representation of peoples where the act says that a person can contest a general election or the group of by election or biennialism maximum in two constituency and let's see that what would happen there have been a several cases where the person contested the election in the two constituencies and win the both i would not name here but you may have the search or you may have the because many of the politician who contested from the two seats and won the election both and lastly what is the situation he has to vacate one seat and one of the two then here it is we are going to discuss that the adequate representation of the women who constitute nearly half of the population country in the parliament or the state legislature is another burning issue by which has been agitating the mind of the nation means their participation at the grassroots level democratic institution like gram panchayat jilla parishad municipalities etc has already been ensured by the 73 or 74th amendment to the constitution in 1992 whereby not less than the one third of the seats of all panchayati raj institution have been reserved for the women but the such reservation of the women in the parliament and the state legislature is defying the solution for the last several years into the politics so to so 
as I have said earlier, why we need, why we need the political representation. The first is equality between the women and men. And second is women right to a full development of their potential. As the third is women rights to self representation and self determination. And further, now, here, the women in empowering or empowerment, the key indeed is a power. It is a power to access, control and make informed choices. But here, the political empowerment, the use of mixed power, effectiveness and capability, influence can challenge the transform, the structure and the institutional ideologies. Further, and this, the something related to the, the consequences of the by-election, what we have spoken regarding this, the section 33, that the by-election would require from one of the constituency involving avoidable labor expenditure on the conduct of that by-election. Here, the commission is of the view that the law should be amended to provide that a person cannot contest for more than the one constituency at a time. It was a great debate that why not we should give the chance to another person because if the bylaws by uh, sorry if the mm, two mm, seats has been borne by the same candidate he will again secure or the political party will again secure that this seat must go into my favor as the representation is coming into my favor now the question is starting that the why do you women face a glass ceiling into the politics means those artificial barrier based on the attitudinal or organizational bias that prevent the qualified individual from advancing their organization into the management level position this is the artificial barrier is stereotype or media related issue here so that the sum of the will can provide the reservation will break a glass ceiling the question arises now in 1992, I could remember that when the 73rd Amendment or 74th Amendment was introduced for that, what? The local representation or the local self-governance. It was an unparalleled step to empower women as a decision makers with the one third of the seats reserved for the women. Then, what do you call? Here is the some thing which has been converted into the different things are, means the reservation introduced the 73rd and 74th amendment was on rotational in nature 
for a certain period of time certain panchayat or municipality were reserved for the women rotational basis and the total something 14 state has given the 50 to 58 percent reservation into the panchayati raj institution like jharkhand which leads nearly a 58 percent and followed by the rajasthan and the uttarakhand this led to empowerment here the further again the commission has also been added that the case of legislation in the view that what is the felicitation contest from two constituencies one can be retained too so the account of then appropriate amount of money being expenditure for holding the by election here the women reservation bill is introduced before the parliament when seeking that the women seats must be reserved to the one third of means that becomes the 33.33% in the lok sabha or the lower house of the indian parliament and in the legislative assembly for women in as per the 73rd and 74th as i have mentioned earlier which reserved the same percentage as it is in rural and urban local area bodies so the bill has also initially launched in 1996 year back and the after the long battle means the rajya sabha could pass this bill on 9th march 2010 with the use of resistance from the different different parties it seems that the no parties want that some of the the good things which result to the in favor of the women should be passed and it is yet to be passed that's why i was mentioning related to the a study by the U, united nation by the united nations university world institute here the women legislator in india raised economical performance in their constituency by 1.8% then second one is that the women legislator in india raised the numerously growth in their constituency and we have the many example into that here some of the study is also given that the women can also gives that uh, something empowerment to the something uh, uh, i wanted to uh, go something back into that the in september 96 the bill was introduced and it was failed to get the approval of the house and was referred to the jpc that is called joint parliamentary committee and in 1998 the nda one has introduced the bill without any success and the bill lapsed and was introduced in 99 again in 2002 again and in 2003 again and in 2008 again when the upa one was introduced the women represent uh, reservation bill in the rajya sabha and it was passed but still not passed in the 
Lok Sabha. So here, the something, the gist of that, the here is the position. Uh, I have mentioned that the one forty ninth position, uh, India stood in two thousand nineteen out of one ninety three countries, and where the women representation is into the national parliament trailing the pakistan bangladesh afghanistan and others here i took the small country like rwanda and it is currently ranked the first in the world has the 49 women mp in sir uh, in its uh, 80 seats in lower house see the the structure of so here already i have mentioned in the in the 73rd and 74th uh, amend constitutional amendment here the something uh, the provision has been given into the the constitution of india in article 243d where the one third of the seat of the panchayati raj institution and one third office of the chair person at all level of the panchayati raj was to covered in part 9th of the constitution are reserved for women and the this has been legal made the legal provision for the 50% reservation for the women in the where as a sarpanch like in andhra pradesh bihar Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, like these type of states are here. Then the government has also approved the provision for en enhancing the reservation of the women in the panchayat from the present one third to fifty percent. but see the condition that the government has approved the uh, reservation related to schedule and schedule tribe shall be on the basis of percentage of rural population not a total population whereas this requires the approval of the lok sabha so further here is the 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 conclusion is that whatever may be the ultimate solution the need for an immediate and amicable settlement of the issue by all concerned hardly need to be stressed as the empowerment of the women and giving them their dues and well deserved place in the indian polity is the concerned by all by taking the example of the rwanda which experientially shown that the women reservation can bring the sufficient change in the process of the women empowerment and the systematic inequality that infuses every aspects of the social expression can only be addressed to the political empowerment of the women that's why it will reach the act to strengthening our social political system so therefore you could note down this is the outlook of the women reservation now you can note down the two questions that first is write a short note on the defacement of the public and private properties secondly related to the women parliament representation second question is write a detail about the reservation for women in parliament and the state legislature by 
over all this you can go ahead by the keeping of the in mind that the defacement of the property as well as the women representation into the parliament as well as the legislative assembly so by going through you can note down and you can uh, give the answer to my the question and if you have any query you can contact me to the following numbers 9289-460-910 or you can write me at kb.asthana at cpj.edu.in Till then, thank you, thank you very much.